Steve, I just want to apologize for for what happened out there. That I had no intention on hurting you. That I feel off for what transpired. And Moore just hit Nasman and Brad May went after Moore. Nasman's hurt. That was a cheap shot uh, by a young kid on a uh, on a captain, leading scorer in the league. When you see the best player and uh, your buddy go down like that, uh, your reactions are pretty strong. Well, Vancouver waited till they got home. They had this chance to do this in Colorado. And more tackles of your right, Peter. Grabs his shoulder, having a little chat with him. Grabs his sweater, gives him a whack. When the Vancouver Canucks welcomed the Colorado Avalanche to General Motors Place on March 8th, 2004, they had one thing on their mind, payback. Their target? A little-known rookie who had sidelined one of Vancouver's biggest stars weeks prior. The Canucks wanted retribution. What ensued, however, was one of the most horrific acts of violence in hockey history, an assault that forever changed the lives of both parties involved and laid bare the destructiveness of the NHL's culture of violence and revenge. As cataclysmic as that March evening in 2004 was for Steve Moore, Todd Bertuzzi, and the NHL at large, the story of Moore's tragically brief NHL career began in earnest three weeks prior. During a mid-February game between Vancouver and Colorado, Moore, a 25-year-old in his first full season at the NHL level, was doing his thing, which is to say, getting under his opponent's skin. Despite averaging roughly a point per game across his decorated four-year run at Harvard, Moore's role in the NHL was to agitate the opposition with his physical play, and he did it well. That night, however, in just the 58th game of his career, Moore became public enemy number one in Vancouver after he laid out Canucks captain Marcus Naslin with a questionable hit in the second period. Although no penalty was called, all hell broke loose with that hit, and Naslin, the NHL's leading scorer at the time, ended up with a concussion that ultimately sidelined him for more than a week. Afterward, the Canucks laid into Moore and the officials. But that was a cheap shot. Uh, by a young kid on a, uh, on a captain, leading scorer in the league, and we get no call. We get no call. Why is there no respect from those referees for the leading scorer in the league? I do not understand that for the life of me. Vancouver GM Brian Burke accused the rookie of headhunting and described the incident as a marginal player targeting a superstar. Meanwhile, Canucks star Todd Bertuzzi called Moore a piece of shit. But the most menacing remark came from Canucks enforcer Brad May. As he told the Vancouver Sun, there's definitely a bounty on his head. Clean hit or not, that's our best player, and you respond. It's going to be fun when we get him. That comment earned May a call from the league's vice president and chief disciplinarian Colin Campbell. And by the time the Canucks and Avs met again two weeks later, it seemed as though cooler heads had prevailed. Ahead of their March 3rd matchup in Colorado, May walked back his earlier remark, while Canucks veteran Trevor Linden plainly stated that their focus was not on Steve Moore or exacting revenge. And indeed, that much anticipated rematch, with Campbell and Commissioner Gary Bettman in attendance, mind you, played out without incident. But as it turned out, the Canucks weren't over it. Not by a long shot. And when the two teams met again five days later in Vancouver, the Canucks' festering desire for revenge culminated in one of the most devastating scenes in league history. As soon as the puck dropped that night, it was clear that the Canucks were coming for more. Less than 10 minutes into the game, Moore found himself in the first fight of his NHL career. And even the broadcasters noted that the Canucks clearly wanted to wait until they were back on home ice to exact their revenge. Well, Vancouver waited till they got home. They had this chance to do this in Colorado. And more tackles of you, right, Peter? They had two chances to get him and go after him, and he did it. They and they do it here. Yeah, they had a chance in Colorado. After he hit Naslin that night, there was 30 minutes of hockey remaining in that one. There were 60 minutes last game when Moore played. They went at it tonight. That was just the beginning, though. See, the game turned into a laugher quickly, with the Avs taking a 5-0 lead into the first intermission. In fact, it was Moore himself who extended Colorado's lead to 5 just minutes before the first bell. And with the game out of hand early, the Canucks were emboldened even more to continue going after Moore, which they did. Sean Pronger pushing and shoving Steve Moore. Steve hasn't had a shift for a while, so nobody's been after him. And with just over 10 minutes remaining in the game, Bertuzzi, in his pursuit of retribution, delivered a vicious, tragic, and ultimately life-changing hit on Moore. 
During that same shift in which Moore was harassed by Sean Pronger, Bertuzzi also went after the rookie, antagonizing him as the two skated out of the Vancouver zone. But when Moore refused to engage, Bertuzzi went ballistic, sucker punching him in the face from behind, then body slamming him into the ice face first. The horrific attack and the ensuing pylon left Moore unconscious on the ice, and it was immediately apparent that the 25-year-old had been seriously injured. Finally, after being attended to by medical personnel for 10 harrowing minutes, Moore was taken off the ice on a stretcher while Bertuzzi was given a match penalty for an attempt to injure. Little did they know, however, that Moore would never take another shift in the NHL and that both their lives would be irrevocably changed from that moment forward. Roughly 24 hours after the incident, the Avalanche provided an update on Moore, who had been taken to a Vancouver hospital. It was grim. He had suffered three fractured vertebrae, facial lacerations, and a concussion. The team confirmed that he would miss the remainder of the season. Meanwhile, Bertuzzi, who had declined to speak with reporters following the incident, was suspended indefinitely by the NHL pending a disciplinary hearing. Additionally, Vancouver police were investigating the hit as a possible assault. As he awaited his fates, though, a distraught Bertuzzi did issue a tearful apology. Comments for Steve. Steve, I just want to apologize for, for what happened out there. But I had no intention on hurting you. And I feel awful for what transpired. A day later, the NHL ruled that Bertuzzi would be suspended for at least the remainder of the regular season and the playoffs. But that was just the beginning of a lengthy list of repercussions for Bertuzzi, whose almost two decade long NHL career would ultimately be defined by his attack on Moore. That June, following an almost four month investigation, Bertuzzi was formally charged with assault, a charge he ultimately pleaded guilty to, earning him one year of probation. Furthermore, while the subsequent NHL season was ultimately canceled on account of a lockout, Bertuzzi was disallowed from playing overseas in 0405 in the wake of his attack on Moore. In December of 2004, the International Ice Hockey Federation barred Bertuzzi from playing in Europe and even went so far as to say that his actions put the sport into disrepute. Then, shortly thereafter, Moore, whose recovery timeline was still unclear at that point, filed a lawsuit against Bertuzzi and the Canucks. He was seeking $68 million in damages. At that point, it should be noted, Bertuzzi tried to lay at least some of the blame on his head coach, alleging liability on Mark Crawford's part. According to Bertuzzi, Crawford had instructed him and his teammates to make Moore pay the price. In any event, Moore's $68 million lawsuit spoke to how uniquely vicious and devastating the attack was, as it ultimately cost him his career. Although he eventually attempted to come back, Moore was plagued by post-concussion symptoms for years afterward, and his health never improved to the point that doctors would clear him to return to the NHL. Bertuzzi, on the other hand, was reinstated by the NHL in August of 2005 after serving what was officially a 17-month suspension. At the time, in terms of games missed, it was the fourth longest in NHL history. Upon returning from his suspension, Bertuzzi spent nine more years in the NHL, although, by all accounts, he was never the same player and he was constantly harangued by opposing fans for his fateful attack on Moore. Incidentally, months after his final NHL game, in August of 2014, Bertuzzi reached a settlement agreement with Moore, whose civil suit had been winding its way through the courts for almost a decade. In the meantime, with his hockey career over, Moore created a foundation dedicated to concussion prevention and treatment. And much like it was for Moore and Bertuzzi, the incident was also a defining moment for the NHL, which saw its destructive culture of violence and frontier justice typified in that one brutal act. An act that resulted in a tidal wave of negative PR. Problem is, rare as they are, incidents like Todd Bertuzzi's sucker punch Monday night can't be ignored by the league, the public, or in the case of Bertuzzi, even the local police. In the aftermath of hockey's latest bloody mess. Afterward, the league was widely excoriated for its laissez-faire attitude towards extreme violence and its eye for an eye code. To that point, many pundits, including Hall of Famer Mike Bossy, felt Bertuzzi's punishment from the league was insufficient. Still, whether you feel Bertuzzi got off light or not, the cultural impact of the Bertuzzi Moore incident can't be overstated. And it's often cited as one of the contributing factors towards the NHL's ongoing efforts to reduce gratuitous violence and concussions. It's unquestionably the demarcation point between the anything goes NHL of old and the more responsible, more proactive, less lenient NHL of today. 
and 20 years later, any extreme act of violence on the ice is invariably judged on the Bertuzzi scale. Of course, the NHL's shift away from extreme violence and naked thuggery doesn't come down to one incident, but there's no question that Steve Moore played a tragically outsized role in expediting that process. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button.